Well, hello there, YouTube. And I uh, hope this video finds you well. It's a crazy world. It's a crazy, 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 crazy world. And that's why I'm making this video. I myself may have come across a bit crazy <laughs> if you've listened to the things I've said. But in fact, I'm the least crazy one around, if you can believe that. And so there's loads that's happened since I last made a video. It's been a while. And it's all crazy. And maybe I could just point out a few of these things. I mean, let's just take one thing, for example. Um, the US has just done an arms deal with Saudi Arabia. Now, we think over the last 30 years or so, how many arms deals have been done with Saudi Arabia? I mean, they must have the biggest hoard of weapons in the world. And you never actually hear about them using them so much. So, you know, it's fucking number one contender, isn't it? They then sell them on to other places. Fueling wars, making them the middlemen, distancing the, uh, the British or the Americans from the actual armification that allows all these serious wars to go on and kill them. So, you know, it's crazy that uh, that this isn't sort of, you know, delved into more and made public. Um, but that's not all. No, no, no. That is not all. Um, there's loads of stuff. Right, today is May the 23rd, and 11 months ago, we had Brexit. Now, I know I've said this before, but I want to make it a point again. A year before, I was warning something was going to happen. Something big. Okay. I was an imagining, I was an imagining, you know, an asteroid or a big earthquake, something that would cause tidal waves, blah, blah, blah. Now, what happened was Brexit. Now, obviously, a year before, I didn't know Brexit was going to happen. I don't think anyone knew the Brexit, the referendum was going to take place until a few months, actually, before it did. And I was making videos, you know, saying, it's coming up, it's going to be major. And then I I specifically said, um, June the 22nd or the 23rd, I felt like it was Wednesday night going into Thursday morning. Thursday morning is the day when people voted. So were their minds being made up the night before? Anyway. I didn't think anything had happened and I was ready to sort of chuck in the towel and go, okay, I'm totally off, not right. But Friday morning, surprise, surprise, wasn't expecting it, the British people voted to leave the European Union. And talk about a massive earthquake with tidal waves, I mean... Brexit has, you know, was definitely that big, uh, what should we call it, shift, which I've said before. It was that big shift, and it's made everybody think all over the world, because the British around the world are seen as, in a sense, you know, leaders in terms of um, sort of how society should be run uh, you know good education 
uh, free but firm and 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 yeah. So for for Britain to then make a vote to go away from globalization, or well, at least you know not wanting this big Europe superpower, um, says a lot. It does say a lot, and it says a lot to people all around the world. So, just to to, to make that clear that, uh, you know, I was going out on a limb, putting my reputation on the line, and I think it's it's played out to show that, that I was right, that was, that was what it was, that's what it was meant to be. Yes. Now then, um, I haven't, right this moment, my mind has gone a bit blank as to what I intended to talk about, but I know the stuff there, I'm just going to chill, so if you're one of those who listen to me, you're probably used to this, you don't make yourself a couple or something, <laughs> relax, and relax. So, well, a lot's happened since my last video. I just see this in there. Stephen Hartley. Goodbye. There's so many of those calls, it's just silence and then goes, Goodbye. And I get so many, a lot of sales calls as well. And what I do, because there's always a delay, so I say my name's Stephen Hartley, and then there's always like a few second delay before they're actually there. So I just stay quiet. And they usually hang up within a few seconds. And if they don't, if it's interesting, if they're sort of waiting on the line, well, it's down the line. It's usually because they can hear the birds singing. So now I'll start to put my thumb over the hole. Anyway. <clears throat> so we deal with sales calls. Unless they're there straight away, which the other day I had, a, you know, it's an English, an English voice and he's there straight away. Fine, I'll speak to him. But, um... And I actually, I actually did change my energy supplier. So I thought, I'm with Empower, and I thought, they're not even English, are they? <laughs> why, <laughs> why am I giving my money to the French? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I might, because they'll ring me and offer me a better deal, I guess, before they cancel my account. I might try and ring an improvement out of them. Anyway, these are just some of the things we have to do. We just pay the bills. Just pay the damn bills. Keep the roof over my head. That's all. That's all we gotta do. Um, so, what else has gone on? Well, with me personally, I've had quite a, quite an interesting time, really. Now, the last video I made, my leg was better, and it's still, still carried on getting better and better. And then, it was only just over a week ago, a week and a few days, I, the problem with my wisdom tooth, I could feel my wisdom tooth moving and then boom, I felt the side of my face starting to swell. So I'd had all this stuff with my leg and healing my leg and I thought, blimey, blimey God, um, why have I got this now? And I just thought, well, this is what I've got, this is what I've got, I've got to deal with it. And in the same way with my leg about feeling pain and stuff like that, embracing the pain, um, I seem to have 
got through it really quick because I'm sure last time it was bothering me for months and that was sort of about three or four years ago and so I was curious why has it come back now la, la, la. anyway and I mean black you honestly you should have seen me like sort of middle of last week it was huge and like a big because I'd st stabbed it before, I'd had that scar and that became like this big nipple, it looked like a big tit on my face. And um, painful, painful to the point where the thought of sticking a pin in it was much more desirable. And that's how I fixed it last time, but last time I got pissed off and stabbed it a few times. So this time it was much more calmer dealing with the pain. I did two jabs. One one just before I went to sleep, and then one straight away in the morning because I didn't feel like it worked. And about 18 hours after that, it started to leak. And after I did the second pin, the pressure felt so much better. So I'm wondering if there actually does need to be two holes because it's happened to me three times that I've that I've stabbed this swelling on my face and. Uh, and the first time I stabbed it twice, second time I stabbed it about ten times, <laughs> not advisable. So it might need two to, to, to kind of get the air going. Anyway, it still took a long time. Once, even the second jab, I jabbed it in and there was pus on the end of the needle. But it didn't, nothing came out like for about 18 hours after that. So it makes me think they're like... Um, channels or whatever oh, no, bloody confusing anyway that pus came out it was fucking smelled disgusting so I don't know what if I had some built up toxins in me or I don't know anyway they were it came out and stopped like overnight and blood followed and then it kind of built up again and then came out again for a second time and this happened before, and the second lot of pus wasn't that smelly. Um, and then blood to follow at the end, and that's where I am at the moment. So it doesn't feel like, anyway, I won't mess around with it too much. But then this morning, <laughs> I woke up bloody sore ribs. So I've got something else to deal with now. Um, you just have, you just have to, because in a sense, sometimes with the pain, it's like you can take the pain, but then you think, am I going to have to put up with this pain for days, for weeks? Then, then you know the psychological bit kicks in, and that can make the pain a heck of a lot worse. So, yeah, it's best just to take what you've got in the now, believe that God will sort you out. Oh yeah, and when I got that thing on my face, I thought, I thought, fuck it, I ain't the Christ. I mean, just, I just thought, I just want to forget about that and just pretend I'm not for a while or something because I don't know why this has come back and and then I guess the fact that dealt with it dealt with it quite well it seems and you know <laughs> I think well oh, maybe <laughs> yeah I can still be but I, it doesn't it doesn't matter I mean does it matter I mean, there is a part of me that feels, feels like I'm in control of things, somehow, like, like, um, like I am ruling, I don't know.
we'll see. We'll see. Sorry, it probably is the most boring video. Did I have stuff to talk about? I mean, I do feel things are happening. Like, I've been listening to the BBC a lot, and their sort of more special sort of programs are talking about the climate change. Oh, yeah, we've got the phosphate problem. That's something that I didn't realise before is that um, uh, fertiliser to grow crops now depends upon having phosphate in your compost, your fertiliser. Nothing will grow without it because it's been depleted in the soil. And you can mine it phosphate rock. So phosphate's kind of everywhere but in such thin amounts and it's degraded in the in the fields to such small amounts that things won't grow. But it's everywhere but you can't kind of go and get it. it it's too spread out, too thinly spread for it to be mined in any sort of way unless um, you use phosphate rock. And there's a certain amount of phosphate rock on the earth. And 85% of it is in Morocco. Interesting. It get very quiet, and Morocco seems to have been very stable, so I guess that's good, because otherwise I might not be able to grow any food. Um, and then you've got... I mean, there's 3% in Syria. Syria is one of the top four countries with the amount of phosphate it has. There's a couple other places I can't remember. Um, and um, it's going to run out in 50 years. So, I better tell my child to tell his child not to have any children, if, <laughs> if that's how things are going to go, if we're not going to start fixing it. But hopefully with points like this we, we will start fixing it. And the way to fix it is to let nature take control, as I've done in my garden. Um, I've shown you a film of it before. It's on the on the power. I can't move it around at the moment. But um, well, you can see my see if you can see my back garden through my. I mean that is just one big bramble and what the bramble has done is it's opened up nutrients to grow trees and I've got 15 foot trees in my back garden and that is my front garden you're seeing and because I've let that bramble come it's come to life now what the bramble does is its roots are able to penetrate uh, the hardest of soils and if you think about a lawn the grass is using that much of the soil, maybe that much, most. So what's ever beneath that is just becoming sedimentary rock. So, uh, it's, but the bramble is able to get down through that, it starts to bring up the nutrients and then other things can access it. And there's obviously phosphate down there. I mean, I've planted so many seeds, but I've never used fertilizer or compost. And, and so no wonder and nothing's grown and um, yeah and that's why let nature take over nature knows exactly what plant will thrive best and that's what plant or tree it will enable because nature is all working in cooperation with nature there's a tree I've got in the back which the birds attack and leave only a few leaves on the end of each branch. Now they're actively managing uh, which trees will do better. Now, <laughs> you know, if that's not nature working in cooperation, whatever, whatever animals you've got. And... If we if we 
if everyone did what I did and just leave their gardens to, to grow, you know, you, you walk in, in and out of your house every day, so those paths will be created. The, you know, brushing past tree branches and things constantly is going to stop them growing across you. Uh, so it's no problem, right? and it's lovely to watch, and it's going to bring thousands of insects, and then you've got birds constantly, and like I say, if everyone did it, you know, then the nature would would uh, be doing good. But it's going to take, you know, 70 years to grow a mature, uh, long-living tree. Um... So, you know, the sooner we start, the better, because we've got 50 years left of food. Yeah. Time to get real. Time to get uh, serious. Uh, what else has happened? In terms of, I was very much looking, saying my last video, good times are coming. And they still are, don't worry. <laughs> I kind of felt something might happen on April 26th around then, but... The only thing that did happen for me, which may, was quite big, I mean, I've got to admit, it's quite big. I shouldn't belittle it. I was on a... a a forum, a theology forum, theology.com, and uh, I kept getting banned for saying that God was partly female, half female, and they said that was blasphemy because they considered women to be subservient to men and to say God is partly woman, say God is partly subservient is blasphemy. It's just stupid. And uh, I got kicked off that forum. But while I was on that forum, I, was, uh, I did change my mind about Paul in the Bible. And I'd actually never really read Paul with an open mind before. When I read Paul before, it was it was kind of not with an open mind. And and I read John and Acts again, and changed my mind about Paul. I liked Paul. Paul. Paul was the right man to choose. But, if you read his letters, you'll see as he ages, he is degrading. Because at the beginning, he's, he's full of this vigour, he's, he's talking about healing in the name of Jesus and everything else. And then, someone tries to heal in the name of Paul in the name of Jesus, and that doesn't work. Uh, they try to get rid of a spirit, and that spirit actually killed the people who tried. So something was going wrong, and and if you think about what Yeshua said, sorry I got a splinter, Yeshua said, while I walk while I'm in the, in the, there will be light in the world while he's there, and that when he goes the darkness will come. So that's what that's what's kind of basically happening in Paul, but I don't think that's recognised so much. And Paul was Paul was waiting for the last days that they were waiting for things because he was he was saying if it happens in my lifetime, da 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 da. So he obviously must have had that thought that it's possibly happening in his lifetime. But all these Bible preachers say no. They knew it was going to be. 2,000 years or something and they still they consider that the last days go on for 2,000 years well that just isn't right you know so Paul degraded so he after so then he's talking about things like um, you know how a decent society should be run instead of you know, if you think with Yeshua and the, and the disciples, it was all about going from town to town and healing in the name of Jesus and stuff like that. And then Paul's talking about men should have short hair. You know, and, and that reminded me, that's kind of why I didn't like Paul before. But, you know, it's not his fault. He's and he's talking about himself being in chains all the time. 
you know. Anyway, still a good man, but not not a patch on Yeshua, right? It, what what Yeshua brought into the world then was, you know, no one no one could do other than him. And once he had died and the memory started to fade, they they lost the power. They lost that power of belief because when they were all believing they were feeling the spirit that was spreading it was you know it, it it was good right but it didn't it didn't fully take over the world because like I said it started not to work when someone involved named Paul and Jesus you know it, it wasn't happening anymore and that would have caused fear people would have feared trying that they didn't want to die so anyway, fizzle, fizzled out, right? Fizzled out, but we have the memory, we have the scriptures. So what it's telling me is like, okay, so I can I can feel God, I can feel the Spirit. Um, I'm looking forward to when others do too, because then we can then we can start to spread things. But it's God's plan and. Yeah, you know, like I say the other day when I was having this thing on my face and kind of giving up and just saying, "Fuck it, I'm not the Christ." I just, it was just a nice feeling just to think, at least I just know that God will save us, and and that that alone that is just nice. That is enough, and yeah, yeah. So, I mean, what's the other crazy things going on, eh? Well, I hope Jeffrey Corbyn wins the election. And he's got a chance. I think he's a smart guy, and I... Yeah. Hmm. Interesting thing about women and men... You know, we are different. And they were, you know, for a while they've been trying to ad address the, the fact that there are more men in boardrooms than women. So a lot of places they made all women shortlist or whatever, and they got the board, say, to be half and half. And they thought, oh, problem solved. Now, that will remain half and half, most likely, you know. But what they found is that the the women too were uh, biased and kept employing men for leadership roles. So even with half the women on the board, you ended up it ended up going backwards to what more like it was before in a sense when there are much more men. I mean, are they biased or are men better in leadership roles? This is something I've been wondering, if we're just different, because let's say these sorts of conversations, logical conversations about what God is, and the, and therefore we then base our decisions on how to act based on what we believe. You know, is that a man thing to do that? I mean, I do kind of remember vaguely <laughs> when I was with my partner over eight years ago, and she would, you know, she would want to present her ideas, but sometimes it seems like my idea was good, and she would willingly carry it out. She kind of liked the carrying it out, the doing it. And, and I kind of liked the planning, you know, and I think that, that does seem to be the a feminine and masculine role so therefore God too then God Father is the planner and God Mother is the carrier out now there's something else I've been thinking about women in this there. the analogy I said before about the solar system the man is the sun simple and strong and the woman is all the planets deep multi-layered so, 
By the way, though, my friend told me that also fits with orgasms, because when man has an orgasm, it's very, it's just dopamine, it's just a big dollop of dopamine that they get. But with women, they get a much bigger mix of uh, hormones and things, and that make them feel differently. Now, I've come to the conclusion that women know a lot more than they let on, then they'd be then they would be able to communicate. You see women they often quite like moving their mouths and just seem, you know, to a bloke it just seems like they're talking about nonsense. But I bet there's something going on deeper under the surface that they're communicating. Because they enjoy it. So they must be getting something out of it. And I almost think that women have got a much <clears throat> much stronger connection to God, Mother God, without possibly knowing it so much, or being able to intellectualise what it is. And, I mean, it's, I think it's hard enough for a guy to intellectualise what's going on on this sort of soul level, but for women it, it just must be a hundred times more complicated. So... So to, to be able to do that is maybe maybe impossible. But they have got that. They have got that connection. That's what I'm beginning to think. But as I'm not a woman, it's very difficult to say. So perhaps um, some women can help me with that. Or not. I don't mind. <laughs> this is the other thing I'm going to do. I, I'm just not going to... I'm not going to try and force the truth down anyone's neck because I know you can say you can say something to someone you are half a universe, but you know that was for me that was like the pinnacle of my learning. It took me a long time to to get to that point where I felt it, and the words that best explained it was you are half a universe. I can't make you feel it. I can't I can't force truth down anyone's neck. They're only gonna hear it when they're ready to hear it. And I have no power over that. Mm. Maybe infinitesimally, but almost when you try and push something it pushes back so you know, probably best not to. Maybe with my son, maybe I've been trying a little bit with him thinking he's young, he's still closer to God, maybe I can, you know, get him, but no. I think until you're 14, 15, you don't, you're not ready to, to start making any sort of choices about what's wrong and right. I mean, obviously, obvious things like it's wrong to stab someone, but you know, until you're 14 or 15, you haven't been here long enough, really. So, yeah. I've, I've heard that written before, or said that when someone becomes 14, then they're, then they're ready to know, then they can start to know what's right, or make that decision, that... that I might as well be speaking in tongues. <laughs> I ain't gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, oh, no, no. I've made um, playlists for all my videos. And... They're in six sections. So anyone... New to this channel, I mean, uh, can I recommend, can't I? Listen to all the shit I've ever said. And there's some entertaining bits in there, but I'm not, that's not what I'm here for. I'm not here to entertain. I don't really like entertaining anymore because I know it's just a distraction. It's just a, a distraction, it, 
delaying delaying doing something real and worthwhile and what's that do you ask? do you ask? Is that? do you want to know? I don't know well I do <laughs> It's your soul. <laughs> um, what else is crazy? Well, Trump's U turn. I probably made a video since. What are U turn? Disgusting. What? Oh. I don't know. These, uh, world leaders, eh? They haven't got the answer. They're not they're not ask they're not addressing the big problems. Which is our planet. <laughs> our planet and the seven billion people on it. They're supposed to be, you know, making sure we don't fuck our planet up. Will they, will they? I mean, watch this space, eh? Very interesting. Go on, then. <clears throat> I know I'm going to stop the video and go, oh, I forgot to say that. It'd be like the most important thing. So I'll ask God. Oh, yeah, I didn't get around, I didn't get around saying, did I? April 26th. So, yeah, so I changed my mind about Paul. And. And it was in John, I think, and it was Yeshua saying, eat my flesh and drink my blood, eat my flesh and drink my blood, in different ways. And I, so I put a question on the forum, it's like, what is this, must be an analogy. And there are a couple of people on there who were kind of directing me, in a sense. And, um, you know, I feel the spirit in them I could and it was nice and it and then someone said read the KJV line 55-56 and it was basically insinuating that to eat my flesh was to have God in you and to drink the blood was to be in God now after Yeshua was saying this he was saying these are the words of my father so it was God speaking through Yeshua, Jesus being the name of God. And, yeah, so for the first time, because I'd kind of had God in me before, and I'd been in God before, but not both at the same time. And before, to try them to do them at the same time seemed complicated. But here in the passion of Yeshua saying, eat my flesh and drink my blood, it was just like a... It was like a commandment in a way, but it was like, you know, this God really wants this. And I was able to do it, and I'm still able to do it now. And, um, 
you know, all through this healing stuff, you know, the, the difference has been having God there. Having God makes all the difference. And you knew God. When you were a little baby, you knew God. If you want to know God, really all you got to do is, you know, with an open heart, remember your life. Ciao for now.